Hey everyone, have you ever tried to learn how to code but got stuck? In my new Private Fan programming class, we're going to break that loop. This course is primarily focused on people who are complete beginners, so don't worry if you don't have any background. This course is different than other courses because we're going to teach you to think like a programmer and solve problems like a robot. So let's get started. Hi, welcome to the second video in this introductory course. This is going to be a video about what programming is. And we're going to go over some of the fundamental concepts before we jump into coding. I think it's important to understand some of these things. I wish someone explained some of these things to me before I started coding. So that's what this video is going to all be about. As with the last video, if you want to just jump in right in and start learning how to code directly, you can jump up to the next video. I still highly recommend watching this video. It will give you more context for what you're actually doing. So what is programming? I'm just going to take the definition from Wikipedia. That's what I have here, straight from Wikipedia. Computer programming is the process of designing and building an executable computer program to accomplish a specific computing result or to perform a specific task. That's a bit of a mouthful, but basically it's something that you create that will make a computer perform a particular task for you. And that's very broad and it should be broad. So you're trying to create a program and a set of instructions to do something that could be as simple as adding two numbers together or as complicated as predicting the next word in a sentence like ChatGPT really can go between those two extremes it can, and it can be anything in between right uh, so that's what you're going to be doing when you when you learn how to program and every practically everything you use on a computer is, is a computer program and therefore is written in a programming language there's code that's associated with that particular application i just wanted to list a couple of, of things so microsoft word excel and powerpoint those all use a language called c i'll talk a little bit later about the languages but it's a programming language Google Chrome uses C++, Web Core, V8, Objective-C, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. These are all just like publicly available information. And Spotify uses C++, Python, and JavaScript to give you a sense of what type of applications are out there and what programming languages they're written in. In order to tell the computer what we want it to do, we need to speak in a programming language to it. So that's when you hear about programming language, that's what the purpose is. And the language of computers is actually electrical current. So computers don't speak in human language. So by simplifying some of the logic, computers work with on and off switches. These are transistors to make calculations and representations. And these on and off switches are known as binary and often represented as zeros and ones. So if you've ever seen like a stream of ones and zeros on a computer screen in movies or in literature, it tends to be that way. This is binary and it basically means on or off. One is on and zero is off. So this is the way that computers actually understand logic and the instructions that a computer understands is all written in binary. Right? And those binary operations, ones and zeros, can be written in assembly language, which is a low level language that translates some human words to those binary operations. And they're considered low level because they're very close to the instructions that a computer uses to perform operations. So low level meaning very close to the original. And low level also meaning as it compared to high level is like less human intu intuition. Computers, for example, need to know some operations for adding together numbers. Think about how we as humans add numbers, decimal numbers. For example, if you were to add two numbers together, you have to consider carrying. If the number is larger than 10, you have to carry a, a, the one to the next place. Uh, the same type of thing is true for computers. Those operations need to be codified in some way. And those are all handled via transistors and binary and how to, how to handle those binary operations. Uh, assembly language will make those into written language. It will directly map those to a word, say carry or end. And those will represent some operations on the binary data. So that's what assembly language is. So I used to think before, anecdotally, before I started programming, that programming was literally about typing ones and zeros into a computer. And that was a pretty terrifying concept to me that what programming is. But luckily for all of us, it is not. Programming is actually using human written language. And assembly language are using human words to describe what the operations are. But assembly language is a particularly low level language. Nobody really writes using assembly language anymore for the most part. Most programming languages used today are high level languages. So they're human readable, no zeros and ones, as I said, and they act like a translator between us and a computer. So I'm, I wanted the computer to do something. I describe that in my human language, and then that gets translated into some binary that the computer can understand. And you might, you might have heard some of them before. So you probably have heard it just in 
uh, popular culture. Some of the programming languages include Python, Java, C++, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, C Sharp, Go, R, Swift, PHP. These are just examples that you might have heard people say in the past of programming languages that people write modern programs in. These are all high-level programming languages. Oh, and Kotlin. Sorry, I missed that one. Uh, and here's some examples on the on the right. So these are all the, the symbols for all of the different ones. Python is right over here. Uh, Kotlin is here. Java, Go. So these are all just different programming languages that are very commonly used uh, in the real world. And which language do you learn? So, okay, this is only a small subset of all of the programming languages. There are many programming languages out there. These are the most popular, I would say, or some of the most popular, but there's so many. So the question is, which language do you want to learn? And this is the biggest question I get asked by people who want to learn programming for the first time is which language, which one do I, which one do I start with? And that is totally understandable. It's completely overwhelming. There's so many, which, where do I start? Many people have opinions about which programming language is best to learn. Uh, like anything else, I believe it doesn't matter which language you learn as long as you learn to think like a programmer. There are some languages that are more commonly used for particular applications, but I think when you're first learning, what really matters is not as much what application you're going to learn for, but just how to think like a programmer. Because those translate to every language. So every language is like human languages in the sense that uh, every programming language has different ways of expressing things, but ultimately it's talking about the same thing in the world that we, we live in, right? For example, English Chinese and Spanish may all have different words for tree or dog, but ultimately there's always a way to express whatever we're trying to express in any of those languages. Arguably, this is a rough, some things in certain languages, human languages may not be easily expressible in other languages, but for the most part, there are most things, right? And the same thing goes for, is true for programming languages. When you learn something in one language, you just have to learn a different syntax and different grammar when you change programming languages. And it's not that easy, but ultimately I, I think it doesn't really matter that much. A few things to note that a lot of people won't tell you. Since programming languages are just ways of talking to a computer, you can generally build anything in one language that you can build in another. It may be much harder because there might not be as many tools that already exist to do that thing. But theoretically, you can still build it in any language. So as I said, there's nothing that different about program the different programming languages in terms of their capabilities. Basic programming concepts transcend a pro particular language. So there's some things that exist in every language, no matter which language you are going to use. For the most part, those pro programming concepts are more important to learn than the actual language that you write them in. And once you learn one language, you have got 80% to learning a different language. Learning to program is less about learning commands and more about learning how to think about how a computer functions. So of course, when people first start learning, I think the biggest thing is, oh, do I have to memorize this command or what's the command? They try to remember exact phrases. And even myself, when I started learning how to program, that's what I did. I just learned, hey, I have to, this is how you write this particular thing. This word means this, and I have to use it in this particular scenario. And of course, that's important to being able to functionally program. But ultimately, the really hard part is not learning those things. You'll learn those over time. You could always look them up. That's easy. The hard thing is thinking about how a computer functions. You can't look that up, right? If you have a problem and you don't know how to solve it, you're lost. You can't really look it up. Some problems maybe you may be able to solve, but in general, you need to know how a computer functions. That's why it doesn't matter which programming language you learn first, because ultimately learning how a computer functions is learning how a computer functions. It doesn't matter which language you learn and how you express it. What you're trying to learn is what is the actual building blocks of a program that I can use. Okay, so taking a jump into Python and what is Python. So on the left here, you see a logo of Python. The course is focused on learning programming using Python. So we're gonna be using Python in this course. So according to Python, Python is an interpreted, object-oriented, high-level programming language with dynamic semantics. It's a lot to unpack, right? But for us, we're going to say Python is a general purpose programming language known for its ease of use and its human readable format. So by general purpose, it means that you can solve lots of different types of problems. So Python isn't specific, specific to one industry or one use. Some programming languages are. For example, R is primarily used for statistics and data analysis. That's its primary purpose. Python is general purpose. So you can use it for data analysis. You can use it for building a web application. You can use it for building a web service. You can use it for anything you can think of that you would need to use a programming language for, you can use Python for, which is great. That's a great thing to learn first. It's easy to use and it's human readable. So 
Actually, for people who don't know how to program, I would say if you just looked at a Python code, you might get a general sense of what's going on. We'll go through a couple of examples in a second. But if you just look at Python code, you could probably understand it. That's what it means by human readable. Some programming languages are harder to understand like that. But Python is very easy for a person to understand what's going on, even if you've never written code in that language before. And Python is great for beginners because of all this. So this is why I selected Python to be the uh, primary programming language in this course. It's also my native programming language, meaning it's the first language I learned. Outside of R, I learned before as statistics, but pretty much the first a major programming language I learned was Python. And make no mistake, it's a full-fledged programming, programming language. So just because it's easy to use doesn't mean it's not powerful or it's not able to express things. It's it do pretty much anything any other programming language can. But you aren't restricted to Python in this course. So anything you learn in this course can be used to help you learn another programming language. Okay. Here's an example of a of code in Java. So this is Java swap numbers code. Java is not Python. And you can see it's a little bit harder to understand and it's a little bit lower level than Python, it's less human readable. But you might have a sense of what's going on here. There's some system out print ln. Okay. And this is a similar program in C++. Again, this is a different programming language than the one we're going to be learning in this course, but it's a lot going on here. A lot of symbols, hard to understand. And this is some code written in Python of swapping two variables. And of course, you haven't learned how to program yet, so this might be a little overwhelming. But just looking at this, comparing it to the previous two, I would say that this is probably easier for you to just understand without even knowing what programming is. Things are being assigned x equals y, y equals temp, and I'm printing out a something, this value of x after swapping, and I'm formatting it with x and y. Again, you, you don't need to understand anything about this, and if this is complete gibberish to you, that's completely understandable because we haven't even gone here yet. Just wanted to show you, just this looks a lot more complicated, even to me as someone who knows how to program, than this does. And I think that's the, the general consensus for most programmers of just ease of use and human readability. Okay, now some more things about Python, just to give you a sense. Python is popular, growing, and it's in demand. So 49.28% of programmers use Python, according to a 2023 study by uh, Stack Overflow. So it's the third most popular programming language, which is huge. And according to GitHub, the largest repositories of open source code, Python is ranked as the second most popular language, only behind JavaScript as of 2023. And it is growing quickly. And there's a year over year increase of 25%, which makes it the sixth fastest growing language, which is huge considering it's the second most popular language. The faster growing programming languages are lesser used languages. So consider that it's big and it's only getting bigger very quickly. And Python is in high demand. So people who are Python programmers command high salaries, indicating that the skills are extremely lucrative, even compared to other types of programmers. So according to Indeed, the average Python programmer can command a whopping 132,592 salary on average. That's a huge number, a uh, very specific number. But of course it varies by person, but it's without doubt one of the more lucrative skills to learn. So it's just a little bit more understanding of what Python is and how it relates to other programming languages. And yeah, so that's it, enough talk now. That's just to give you a bit of an overview of what we're going to be doing in this course. The next video, we're going to be jumping right into doing some code and writing our first code in Python. But yeah, thanks again for following along with the course. I hope you found this helpful. If you do, please like this video. And if you could subscribe, it'd be very helpful because again, I'm making this video in my free time. So any support that you can give will be very helpful. Thanks.